On crypto, I think we're in the middle of one of the great short squeezes of all time. Binance just had over a $500 million collapse of shorts. 65, 70% of Bitcoin hasn't moved in three years. It's yeah. not going to move. Is Bitcoin a better form of money? 100%. Is Bitcoin a better form of gold? 100%. Is Bitcoin the future of value transaction? 100%, right? So on the macro side, I don't think we're out of the woods. I, I don't think we're on the precipice of, of some calamity either. You know, I, I've right. said for probably the last year that this recession, and I actually believe we're in the recession, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think they'll call it retrospectively. They'll say it probably started, you know, March, April last year and, we're probably closer to the end than we are to the beginning. Um, but it's a shallow recession, very, right. very similar in my mind to the 01 recession, right? 01 didn't even really feel like a recession other than the fact that things got exacerbated by the lockdowns following 9-11. You know, if yeah. you go back to 2001, it was, it was interesting in that we had the tech bubble starting to bust. Yeah. Uh, First quarter GDP was negative. Second quarter GDP was marginally positive. Third quarter was negative, exacerbated by 9-11. And then fourth quarter was positive. The whole year, GDP was actually up 1%. You know, we're still waiting on fourth quarter number. With the fourth quarter number, last year is probably going to be a positive number. But we still had two negative quarters, January, February. Third and fourth quarter weren't real in this. What I mean by that is most of the GDP was simply the resale of the oil from the SPR, which is just a bogus way to create right. uh, GDP, but is what it is. It, it's like, it's like the broken window fallacy of hurricanes, right? Hurricane hits, they don't count the destruction against GDP, but they count the rebuilding for GDP doesn't make any sense. Exactly. It's like yeah. retail sales numbers. Retail sales numbers do two things that are just silly. One, they don't adjust for population growth. If there's more people buying stuff, sales go up. You have to adjust for that, but they don't. Second thing, they don't adjust for uh, like price of gas, right? Price of gas goes up. And so retail sales are up. No, that's just a price increase. That's not a good thing. I may buy less mm -hmm. gas because it costs more. So Little things like that drive me drive me crazy, but that's a long-winded way of saying uh, data is bad, right? Leading economic leading economic indicators have been tumbling. Lynn probably talked about that. Yeah. Um, and you know, you think about the future. Uh, we got bad demographic trends, right? We got a lot of people from our age cohort, the boomers, that are turning sixty-five to eighty-five and starting to retire and. And that's, that's negative for productivity. It's negative for working age population growth. GDP equals working age population growth plus GDP. Both of those are sub 1%. So other than, you know, cheating, like by selling oil in the SPR, it's going to be tough to get greater than 2% GDP. So it's going to feel not very good. You throw on top of that, the Fed continuing to tighten. Everybody says, oh, they're, they're pivoting. Well, they haven't pivoted yet. They right. slowed the pacing tightening from 75 to 50. And now people are saying, oh, it's going to be 25 this month. Maybe, maybe. Um, we'll see. But even that is still hiking. That's not cutting. And right. so I'm, I think the macro is still a headwind. Is, is that. Now, on crypto, I think we're in the middle of one of the great short squeezes of all time. And it's not mm. just crypto. It's everywhere, Right. If you look at this this month, right, the first three weeks of, of January, the crappier the company, and crappy is a technical term, the crappier the company, the more money they lose, the worse the business, the more it's up. Peloton, Zoom, um, GameStop, AMC, 60, 70, 80% this month. Forget, you know, over any meaningful period of time. And we're talking three weeks. Now, the problem is, you know, when you're down 90 5% and then you rally 80%, you're still down, you know, in the 90s. So it's, it's not really that good. But um, there's a interesting thing going on this year, Paul, that hasn't happened for a long time. 
So years ago, there used to be something called the January effect, where people would sell their losers in December for the tax loss. Right. And they had to wait 30 days to buy them back. So in January, all the stuff that was horrible the year before did really, really well. And it was known as the January effect. And it was really small cap and micro cap names by and large. And that, that's where the excess returns for the year came from. Well, they changed the tax laws a number of years ago that made mutual funds sell by October 31st, not December mm -hmm. 31st. And so the January effect got shifted to November. So if you look in the middle of November, just about every year, you have this two, three week period where the crappiest companies, right? The things that were just horrible all year did really well. And you didn't get the January effect. Well, this year, mm -hmm. last year was so bad. Like everything was down. Stocks were down, bonds were down, small cap, large cap, international, emerging markets, everything was down, crypto. So the regular folks actually did some tax loss selling. So those tax loss sales were of the horrible companies like Peloton and Zoom and AMC. Right. And they now are rallying in, in a huge short squeeze. And Bitcoin, I, I think I have this right, um, Binance just had over a $500 million collapse of shorts on their platform. So mm -hmm. we are way oversold. I mean, like, I mean, I'm sorry, way overbought. We are as overbought as I've ever seen Bitcoin. So I still believe we're in crypto spring. Crypto winter's over. We got through Hurricane Sam, which I didn't anticipate. And that's where we went. You know, we were at kind of 18,000. And that's what I thought was the bottom. And then we had Hurricane Sam that took us down to 15. And now, you know, when we got back to 18, that to me is, is spring. Spring is choppy, ugly, not really up and to the right. Up and to the right is summer. Summer still three, four, five months off in anticipation of the halving. But, right. you know, so could we have a retracement back to 18 before we head? Uh, you know, we're not, you know, there are a lot of people saying we're going to be new all time highs this year. Possible possible. That's interesting. Um, definitely likely in early 24. Um, here's an interesting stat. Every halving adds a zero, meaning it increases the market cap of the Bitcoin asset by tenfold. So we went from one to 10 in the first halving. Then we went from 10 to 100, from 100 to 1,000, went to 10,000 in the last one. And I think, you know, January, February next year, we go to, to the 100K. And, uh, and we'll surpass that because then the next one after that, you know, brace yourselves, right, is a million four years later mm -hmm. in 2028. Um, people say, that could never happen. Mm -hmm. No, it will happen. It, yeah. It's just going to take time. Uh, if Barry and, and Grayscale are forced to liquidate GBTC, mm -hmm. which, you know, there's, there's a bunch of shareholders that are you know, kind of coming together to try to force that issue, right? Closed-end funds can get taken over by their shareholders and can yeah. be forced to liquid. Now, the, the bar is a little higher with GBTC, as I understand it, with the structure. Like a lot of closed-end funds, you only need about 10, 11% of shareholders to get a mm -hmm. special vote. I think the, the, the number here is higher than that, maybe even as high as 50. I don't, I don't know that number exactly. But, but even so, um, if, and that's capital I, capital F, if GBTC trust was forced to close and we basically sold 10 billion, now probably closer to, to 11 or $12 billion of, of BTC, that's about 10% of available circulating supply, right? Not right. total supply, but remember 65, 70% of Bitcoin hasn't moved in three years. It's yeah. not going to move. So the, the, the free float is what we have to talk about. And GBTC owns, as I understand it, about 10% of the free float. Mm -hmm. Now, if that were liquidated, everyone says, oh, it'd be horrible. It'd be, you know, be straight down. Well, remember, for every seller, there's a buyer. And I think there's a lot of money waiting to get back in. And so I think it would be bad short term, but I don't think it'd be a disaster. And I think we could, could handle it. Now, I also think Barry has said you can take... GBTC, when you pry it from my cold, dead hands, okay, that, that's pretty strong. So I, I don't think it's going to get liquidated. So if it doesn't get liquidated, 
I, I, I think we're, we're in pretty good shape. Now, when I say pretty good shape, I mean, I think this is a short squeeze. I think we'll have a retracement, a pullback. I think it's still positive. And short of a liquidation of GBTC, I think we are in the beginnings of the accumulation phase again, right? In the four-year cycle, we have crypto winter, spring, summer, and fall. We were in winter. Now we're in spring. Summer's still coming. And summer is when you get the big parabolic move. And then fall, you get the kind of consolidation and, and heading back into winter. Um, so I think all that is good. The, the, the one thing that, that I do struggle a little bit with is uh, the technicals versus the fundamentals. So mm-hmm. a lot of people are looking at technicals and, and yeah, the technicals look good. You got, you got a rising you know, 50 day breaking through the, the declining 200 day. That's a big positive. We got a, a momentum thrust out of the, the bottom. Um, but that, that oversold RSI is, is troubling, right? If, I mean, our thing about RSI, it, it doesn't have any plateaus, right? Never, ever, ever does it go up into the seventies and stay right. there. It yeah. goes up higher than you think. And then it goes back yeah. down. I mean, it's a oscillating pattern for a reason. So um, that so 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 there's there's those. But the the thing that that is more uh, I guess concerning for me is the fundamental part, right? That what Sam at all? And again, I don't think it was Sam or Caroline. I think they are useful idiots of some sure. much smarter, bigger, you know, sinister plot. Um, I, I think that damaged credibility and confidence and, and that's what new markets need. If you think yeah. of, of anything, think about the first time you went to put your credit card into the internet, how scary yeah. that was, how <laughs> uncomfortable you were with the technology. Was it really encrypted? Would it get stolen? Was I safe? Now we don't think about it. We don't, we throw our credit card around everywhere and no big deal because now we're comfortable with the tech. And yet when there are breaches still to this day, when Visa gets breached and a bunch of data gets stolen, people say, oh, I'm not going to use my credit card for a while. We'll look right and past so it. damaging confidence is what slows technological adoption. So mm-hmm. look, is Bitcoin a better form of money? 100%. Is Bitcoin a better form of gold? 100%. Is Bitcoin the future of value transaction? 100%, right? Having a source of truth on chain as opposed to trust in intermediary financial institutions is a superior model. It it just is. It's as superior as you and I using the internet to communicate instead of smoke signals or the old landline telephone, right? This is superior. Um, yeah, for sure. Although I don't like the fact that it's HD. I look better in like, you know, you know fuzzy. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I do worry that, that we need confidence to come back. We need some, some trusted parties, you know, people with good reputation to really get out in front. Uh, you know, I, I urge the, gem, the, the Winklevoss twins to take that role. Uh, trustworthy guys, you know, smart guys. Um, you know, they're the victims here. If you think about what happened to them, right? You know, Genesis yeah. welched on on the loan, right? 